Welcome to our all day movie workshop. I'm Peter and uh, we're experiencing some technical issues in our studio today. So I'm coming from a different location, <laughs> but we'll still continue on with the movie. And so I'm going to be the host today and I can just let you know of the flow of the day. So we're going to start with a movie from David and then we're going to have a 10 minute break afterwards. And that will be followed by our breakout rooms where you'll get to share whatever has come up for you during the movie. And then we'll have a 45 minute break and then I'll be holding the closing session today. So I can pass it over to you now, David. Thank you, thank you, Peter. Hi everyone. Glad to see you all smiling. Wow, we have a, a great, great uh, day set up for you. And uh, yeah, we just, we, we tend to have some very, very deep, deep classic movies that are kind of like mind openers that are the equivalent of taking uh, sometimes LSD. <laughs> and some people have said, give me a break, David, these last four movies. I mean, what are you trying to do? Uh, do I have a few months left on earth or give me a few years? Or are you just trying to just rip the cord off of my, <laughs> off of my wrist? What are you going to, what are you doing here? What is Jesus doing? It's, it's starting to get uh, real swirly. It's starting to get surreal. Uh, and so then when that happens, I, I always remember uh, lesson 133, I will not value what, what is valueless, where Jesus says from time to time in this teachings, if it seems very uh, theoretical, it's good to bring the student back to practical concerns. Isn't that sweet? He does that in lesson 133. He says, oh, let's come on back now. You know, you still believe you have feet on earth. Okay, uh, let's, let's be practical. Let's really be practical. So after eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, if your mind wasn't blown by that, we came in with, with full of grace, Mother Mary, deep, meditative, reverent, dive, dive, dive down into the light. And then our last couple movies, Solaris, Hold on to your hats, because linear time is going bye-bye. And then if that wasn't enough, we came in with the nines last week. And some of you were like, oh my God, good Lord. I had one uh, person said she threw up after the movie. Uh, <laughs> but Ma Marina was relating it to me. She said, no, but it was good. It was good. It was healing. <laughs> Vomit, good, well, you know, it's the unconscious mind. You know, we're, we're just stirring up the ego. It's like taking, the, taking a stick and putting it in a hornet's nest. <laughs> These last four movies is like sticking a, a stick in a hornet's nest. And the hornets are not happy. The ego is not happy with that stick. So today, Jesus is saying, let's get back to like romantic comedy. Uh, after, <laughs> after all this, <laughs> we need to have a romantic comedy, spiritual, deep, profound, but, but a little bit on the light side. So I hope we don't have anybody vomiting today after the movie. I think, I think this is actually a soft, way. It's like going into heaven on a soft pillow, just letting yourself relax and letting yourself be carried by a beautiful, beautiful parable and a beautiful, beautiful movie. So as usual, the movie for today is the result of your, your votes. And wow, we came up with some amazing themes and you all voted. And this is how it came out this week. On the top of the combined poll, I say combined because as, as most of you know, we have a combined poll between an English poll, 
a tribe online community poll and a Spanish poll. And then we put them all together and we look at the top themes and then usually around Thursday or Friday, I just start praying and praying, looking at the themes, praying, being open to receive a movie that will take us into the experience. So here are the top themes for this week. Very good. They're very, very, very deep themes. Number one is how to have the experience of being done through, you know, of being like the body is like a puppet and the one that's holding the crossbar above is, is the Holy Spirit. And so the words that come through the puppet's mouth are from the Holy Spirit. The actions that come from the puppet are the actions inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I know a lot of people often have a lot of questions about this being done through, being animated by the Holy Spirit and listening to one voice and having only one purpose. And then everything that the body seems to say and do is coming from the Holy Spirit. So there's no person that has to figure out how to be done through. This is just from your prayer in your heart, just your desire. When you just pray and say, Holy Spirit, Jesus, use me. Being done through is, is an expression of that. Also, some of you might remember that Jesus talks about the mind and he talks about consciousness as being the domain of the ego. Because in heaven, there is no consciousness. Uh, consciousness is a realm where there are uh, levels. In heaven, it's just pure oneness, it's pure light. But in consciousness, there are levels. And Jesus, in the clarification of terms in A Course in Miracles, says that this mind that seems now to be believe in consciousness, which is a belief, it basically is spoken about as if it has two parts. So in heaven, it's pure oneness, just pure love, e eternity, infinity. And then consciousness is the domain where the mind training occurs. And it's described as if it has two parts and it's a right mind and a wrong mind. The Holy Spirit lives in and is the right mind. And Jesus is with us right now in the right mind. And the wrong mind is the ego. And that's the part that perceives fragmented perception, perceives different people, different places, different things, as if their separation is real. That's the wrong mind. It's just a belief. You know, the whole point of enlightenment and spiritual awakening is to, is to laugh at that belief in division, in fragmentation, in conflict, uh, in preferences, in opinions. You just want to laugh at it. You know, that's, that's the whole point of everything that we're doing is just to laugh at the ego and see its nothingness. Jesus saw its nothingness. And in the Bible, it says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's what he was talking about. He said, Satan is underfoot. Beautiful. Well, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty uh, graphic, but he's basically saying, I have transcended the ego. And so will you. Basically, you were with me. He says, when I awoke, you were with me. So he's like, You're, we're right. We're the same one, really. You just have to realize it. You know, it's, it's already done. It's a done deal. You can't mess it up. It's just a matter of your willingness and your prayers to bring it into your actual awareness and your experience. So this consciousness receives messages from above, we'll say the Holy Spirit and below, the ego. And consciousness does induce action. So 
when you talk about being done through, it's not there's a personal you. There's no personality self that really is deciding what it's going to do today. There's really no personality self that can decide things in the world. Oh, am I going to be single or married? Am I going to be uh, live in this country or that country? Am I going to study this spirituality or that spirituality? Am I going to have a salad for lunch today or a sandwich? No, there, the one that seems to be deciding the things of the world is the ego. And, and Jesus is saying it's a joke. That's why this world is a joke. <laughs> he says it's a joke to think that time can come to circumvent eternity. It's like you're trying to draw a circle and you're trying to box in eternal life. You're trying to circle it. You're trying to circumvent eternity. And he's laughing. He's always laughing. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstance, Jesus is always gently laughing. You can just feel that in your heart. <laughs> it's just, the, no matter how dramatic you perceive the situation, he's still like, ha, <laughs> He's like still laughing. And, and oftentimes, you know, you go, what's so funny? And he's like, it's a joke. <laughs> and then you say, I don't get it. But today we're going to try <laughs> to get the joke. We're going to try to really get the joke today. Okay, second one. Second of the poll results. Living in divine providence. That just means that you realize that as a person, you don't do anything good or bad or right or wrong. You're not personally responsible for surviving on planet Earth, even though most of us believe we needed to have lots of education and skills and abilities. We had to do jobs, work careers, and do a lot of household chores keep your house clean, keep your refrigerator clean in order, uh, you know, on and on and on. If you have a car, keep your car running, you know, keep the body working. That's a lot of pressure. And Jesus says, remember in the back of our minds going, ha, ha, ha. It's, it's just one big joke and you, you're taking it all so serious. Medications, all kinds of things, well, I got to go in for surgery. I got to do this. I got to do that. And Jesus is like, oh, okay. Ha, ha. You know, he's always laughing with us. He's never serious. He absolutely is never serious. He never goes, uh oh. He never goes, oh, you blew it. <laughs> he just laughs. Even when you're sure you blew it, he's laughing. He's always laughing. Okay. Third theme, the guiding principle is love and your intuition. With everything that is perceived in this world, the guiding principle is love. Sometimes people say, what makes the world go round? Well, in one sense, the, the energy, the, the power of the mind is rooted in love. It's rooted in the only law that there is, the law of love. And of course, you've read it in the Course. In, in uh, Lesson 50, Jesus says, I am sustained by the love of God. That's, that's what the love, the guiding principle is. That's also what the divine providence is from the previous thing. It's, it's love. Love is the source of divine providence. Love is the source that gives us the reflection of the forgiven world and, and the happy dream. And every single action that the body does or that we perceive from anyone, there is a principle that is underneath the making of this world. It's obviously making up form and fragmenting that form is, is an attempt at miscreation. 
The only problem with miscreation is it's not real. That's why Jesus is laughing. <laughs> you, you can't miscreate because if you could, it would be it would be dark, it would be dire, and it's not. So Jesus is always reminding us, you don't have the power to miscreate. You have the power to create like God does in spirit, but you don't have the power to miscreate. Okay, number four, letting go of family roles. 44 votes. The, the movie we're watching today has, has a bit of that in it because Family roles are part of the ego's self-concept. So there's guilt tied in to these roles. You may say, is it a problem to, to, to be in the roles? And Jesus is basically saying, well, your one role is forgiveness. Your one sole responsibility is atonement. So, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they're saying, we're fine with fake. We know the ego made up all these roles, but, but we can use them to unwind your mind from the ego. So basically, in terms of all the guilt around these roles, Jesus is just saying, no problem. I got it. I got your back here. Uh, you're going to laugh at this at one point. You're, you're not going to feel guilty anymore. You're not going to be so serious Oh, but I failed in my role. Well, Jesus is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ego made the role, and the ego made the feeling of failure. So let's come back a little further and laugh at this thing. Let's not get too serious about these roles. And in this movie coming up, we're going to have a husband and a wife and a son. So we've got a cute little family, and then we're going to have an angel. <laughs> and the angel has been sent in to help undo the conflict, uh, the, the conflicts that are going on uh, in the self-concept. And the last one, 42 votes, this one could be right on top as well. You can flip them around if you want. Clarity about the authority problem. You know, that's the only problem there is, is the belief that you can author yourself. It's the belief that you're the author of, of yourself is, is a lie. God is the author of Christ, and Christ is the self. So the belief that you can author yourself sets in motion a perceptual temper tantrum called linear time and space, and... And the authority problem is, is the fundamental question around who is the author of, of my, my identity. That's what the authority problem is. It really doesn't involve authority figures because when we look at parents or we look at police officers or we look at judges or ruling politicians or ruling political parties, no, that's the projection of the authority problem. We, there's really no authority issue. And oftentimes in relationships, the authority issue will get projected out onto the relationship. So it seems like it's one person trying to control another person. That's not it either. Uh, it's just in the mind. The mind believing it can create itself is what generates the authority problem. Now, we'll go back to the top uh, theme, how to have the experience of being done through. For most people who work with the course, uh, one of the biggest struggles and issues is the idea that, that Jesus is a symbol that is a role model, except that he seemed to have his earth life 2,000 years ago, before there were motion pictures, before we, we could have uh, recordings of what was actually said and what was done and, and have like a reality TV series. Wouldn't you love that? Maybe we can uh, form some kind of a channel. If we can work it out with our mind, if instead of Gaia, it'll, we'll come up with our own channel where we'll, We'll get access to the Akashic records 
and we'll we'll get permission to go back and then we'll we'll do the whole thing and that would be helpful but people say that's that would be cool like a nice camera like the truman show except instead of truman jesus christ is is the is the one that is going through the show of awakening and we get to follow there's cameras everywhere we get to see everything oh who's that mary magdalene is coming to oh that's jesus with mary magdalene what are they talking about Let's zoom in to the shirt mic to the robe mic <laughs> on the purple robe jesus is talking with Mary Magdalene, you know, and we, you know, wouldn't you love to have a, a full, accurate, uh, full-blown uh, reality TV show with Jesus as the reality TV star? Well, the only problem is, is that we haven't done it yet. It's two, it's 2,000 years ago. We still have scholars that are debating whether Jesus even existed in, in linear time. <laughs> So we're a little far away. We have the Cardassians, so meanwhile, <laughs> we have some other reality TV shows going. But how to have the experience of being done through? Well, the movie we're going to watch today is very cool because Denzel Washington, that's right, Denzel is going to play an angel. And we need to watch movies with angels. And how many of you believe in angels? Yeah, it's, I've had so many experiences in my life. I've even had people that I've lived with who have channeled music from the angels. There's just been so much of, a, of an angel influence. So maybe since Denzel is playing an angel in the movie, I'll, I'll talk just a little bit about angels. I'll give a little context on the last three decades I've been teaching about what are, what are angels. But I wanna come back to Denzel and the role of an angel because angels are symbols of the Holy Spirit's love for us. They're symbols of help. They're symbols of comfort. They're symbols of wisdom. They're symbols of willingness, uh, willingness to follow follow the Holy Spirit. They're symbols of the willingness to follow the Holy Spirit. They may take a form or they may take many different forms and that depends on the perceiver, uh, which is the mind and what the mind values and what the mind is terrified of. So for example, if, if you're used to having a cup of tea at night by your bed uh, and putting the tea on the bedstand, and it would scare you to have an angel show up sitting on your bed. It would, if that would freak you out, then it's not going to happen. The angels don't appear where they're not asked to appear. They don't kind of, they're not intrusive. They're not like sentinels in the matrix. They, do, they don't have any intrusiveness. They just are soft reminders and helpers and they're symbols. If you want a symbol in form, then, and you believe in the helpfulness of, of a symbol in form, then that is, can be fulfilled with, with, an, with an angel. So in the movie of today, we are going to watch The Preacher's Wife, 1996. Denzel Washington, Whitney Houston. Uh, Whitney Houston plays the preacher's wife. <laughs> uh, and in the movie, uh, Whitney Houston, her name is Julia Biggs, and her husband is a minister, the Reverend Henry Biggs. And the angel that is sent to answer the Reverend's prayer for help He's just reached a place of overwhelm. And so he cries out much like uh, Bill Thedford called out and said, there must be a better way, help. Uh, and then basically Helen Shuckman said, you're right, Bill, and I'll help you find it. Well, in this movie, uh, the Reverend Henry Biggs has reached a place of frustration, overwhelm, and he's a minister, so 
I don't know if, if any of you have ever had the role of minister, but it's like any role in the world. You can, the ego can make it stressful. <laughs> any role that you come up with that the ego makes, it can make stressful. So it's not just ministers, but in this case, uh, Henry is very distressed and he calls out for help. And Dudley, that's who Denzel Washington plays. Dudley is the angel who, who is sent to earth to help Henry and to help uh, Julia. And they have a son, Jeremiah. Ooh, that's a real biblical name. This is, they're using real strong biblical symbols. Minister symbol, Jeremiah. There was a song called Joy to the World with Three Dog Night, but that was, Jeremiah is like a famous uh, biblical character, the Battle of Jericho. But basically, Dudley is coming in to provide help to the situation. Now, why is that important? Is because our top pole is how to have the experience of being done through. Well, if you want a good example of being done through, Dudley is a good example. An angel is a really good example of being done through. Maybe you want to start thinking of your personality self as an angel. That would be a good start. If you, if you say, I really want to be done through, but I have problems. I wish I was an angel, but I have problems. So I have a block. Wish I was an angel, but my friends and family, my mom doesn't call me an angel. She has a few other words, choice words. Angel is not one of them. But basically, you have to start to think of yourself as, as an angel, because if the body was made by the ego and you give it to the Holy Spirit and Jesus, then, of course, the Holy Spirit and Jesus will use it. And they will use it actually very angelically. You, you will inspire happiness and joy by the way the Holy Spirit and Jesus use, use the body. So though the body was made by the ego as a symbol of separation, as a symbol of differences, as a symbol of pride and uniqueness, mm, wiped clean, now new purpose to be done through by Jesus and the Holy Spirit to unwind from the ego. So let's just step back for a second to a bigger context, like that's why this number one theme of really having the experience of being done through is so important is because it's, it's quite difficult to go from seeing yourself as a body to seeing yourself as pure spirit. There has to be a transitory phase in which the dream starts to feel less judgmental and then more bright and more happy and more consistently happy. And that's when you start approaching being done through. If you think of the earth and time and space, sometimes I call it different adjectives. I call it distractionville, okay. I, I often call the world and, and linear time distraction though, but, but for today's top theme, I'm going to call Earth not the planet of the apes. Earth is the planet of the doers, <laughs> okay? This is the planet of the doers. You have to believe you're a doer to get here. In fact, you can't even get here if, if you, unless you believe in doing. Because doing involves what? The body. Yeah, there's no, if there's no body, then how can you say I didn't do enough? How can you say, how could you ever say I didn't get that done? Who, what? The body didn't do enough. The body didn't finish the task. The body didn't get the job done. The body is not enough. Now, Jesus is saying, this is the planet of the doers. And you don't escape the planet of the doers by just wishing. I wish I weren't here. <laughs> some, of, some of us have said that. I wish I, I wish I wasn't even here. <laughs> I read the course. Now I wish I wasn't here. Jesus is like, well, let's have some fun and let's, you know, 
we're fine with fake and the body is fake. We're fine with fake, but let's have some fun uh, shining the light for a while before you lay it aside. You know, it's just like a sweater you wear, but Jesus is saying, don't get so angry at your sweater because the sweater is not the problem or the scarf. I see marga has got her scarf on. It's like, don't, let's not blame the scarf. Let's not blame the scarf. Let's just wear it loosely, not choke, not too tight, but let's wear it loosely and it looks pretty and it's nice warmth on the neck and that's good. And let's just let it be used for a while and then let's gently take it off because we don't need the scarf anymore. We don't need the body. At some point, you, you'll, in your mind, you'll say, I have no need for this body anymore. And Jesus will laugh and laugh and laugh at the idea that you ever thought you needed a body. You'll have a, you'll have a good laugh at that one too. But he's just laughing at everything. So, so this is important because on the planet of the doers, you can escape by allowing the Holy Spirit and Jesus to use the body and be done through. So allow yourself to entertain the idea that you can use the rest of your time on earth to be angelic. Why not? It's not so bad, really, you know, to be, to be angelic. What's wrong with that, you know? And if people say that's not good, you know, you can listen, but, you know, if people say, well, angelic, that sounds really boring. Well, that's how the ego sees angels, it's very boring. Or if you say, being angelic, that's going to, that's going to ruin my love life. <laughs> to absolutely destroy my love life. Well, maybe you don't know what love is. If, if being angelic will ruin your love life, then <laughs> maybe you have a, a twisted uh, perception of what love is. Maybe you don't know. Maybe that's the better thing to say. I don't know what love is, but maybe if I'm being done through, I'll get closer to knowing what divine, universal, agape love is, is all about. So that's what this movie is. This movie is is not quite like the last movie where uh, our, our friend uh, Gary pulls the, the strap on his uh, wrist and the whole world slowly fades and disappears. This is a movie that's an answer to the prayer of how to have the experience of being done through. And I, I really enjoy watching these films with Denzel Washington, you know, Oh, what a what a sweet angel! Uh, and and Denzel, his uh, his mother is very very devoted to Jesus, and and he's had he was grew up, you know, in that thing of being baptized and and baptized in the Holy Ghost and all that. And now, this is probably one of Denzel's major contributions to our movie watchers' guide to enlightenment. This is, this is one of his starring roles. It's an absolute classic. And, and it's so beautiful because he's allowing his body to be used in an angelic role that is giving us all a good role model, a practical role model for how to navigate time and space. He, He's as a symbol, he will still seem to have his a few difficulties and struggles. But that's the way with all angels uh, in all the movies throughout history. What's the most famous angel movie that you can think of? What's the most famous angel? I know there was a TV series in the United States called Touched by an Angel, but I think coming in at ding ding number one. It's a Wonderful Life with James, Jimmy Stewart. And, and in that movie, which I remember, I think every Christmas when I was growing up, I would turn on the TV and there was this black and white uh, movie that was playing every Christmas. Not only every Christmas, but basically all of December. 
Every time I turn the channel on, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. And in that movie, Clarence is the angel. Clarence is the angel. And Clarence is sent to Earth to help the main character played by Jimmy Stewart. And, and Clarence has an assignment to be truly helpful so that he can earn his wings. So in one sense, we could think that's kind of like Denzel. He's, he's coming to be done through, to be truly helpful so that he can earn his wings and fly off, fly back to God and light in, in oneness. So that's, that's an example of it. Now, a little bit of uh, background on the movie we're going to watch. The Preacher's Wife, 1996, is actually an adaptation or a remake of a 1947 movie called The Bishop's Wife. So if you love this movie and you think, oh my gosh, that was so helpful, I can't get enough of it, go back and watch the first one too. Why not treat yourself to The Bishop's Wife? Instead of Denzel playing the angel, it's Cary Grant playing the angel. Judy, Judy, Judy. We're, we're remembering you, Judy Scotch Whitson. That was his, that's one of his famous lines from one of his movies. Judy, Judy, Judy. Except I can't do the accent. But, <laughs> But Cary Grant is, plays the angel, uh, Loretta Young plays the wife instead of Whitney Houston, and, and David Niven, oh my gosh, what a minister. I, he's got to be one of the best actors playing a minister I've ever seen in my life. So the original 1947, if you've got mwge.org, watch it with, with uh, on there, I think uh, we've got it on there. And the original story was a novella written back in 1928. And so this is the classic uh, parable. It was written in 1928, came out as a movie with Samuel Gold Goldwyn uh, in 1947. And then in 1996, Samuel Goldwyn's son, Samuel Goldwyn Jr. did The Preacher's Wife. And that's what we're watching today. You see, you can even feel the, the presence of the novel and the two movies that, that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are just using this over the decades. The same, the same classic movie is being used and reused as a teaching device. So first there was the novella. Jesus said, did you get it? Okay, let's do a movie. Cary Grant would really pull it all. Samuel Goldwyn's studio. Did you get it? No, 1996. Denzel, Whitney Houston, a voice like Whitney Houston, gospel music. My God, did you get it? Okay, now it's 2021. Now David is going to, let's take it again. Let's try it one more time. It just takes one instant, right? So it doesn't matter. All we need to do is really feel and experience the glory of being done through. Because we only escape this world of time and space through the, the purpose of, of being done through. So I think you're gonna laugh today. I think you might cry, but in, in a good way, happy tears. I think your heart is going to like burst open because the lesson is so beautiful and so strong. And before we start the movie, the last thing I want to leave you with is I went on to uh, Instagram and on our Course in Miracles Instagram, there was a poster and the poster was the preacher's wife. <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> even on Instagram. But the thing that caught my attention was it's their son in the movie, little Jeremiah Biggs. He's the little boy uh, that, that Henry and Julie have. And this is what 
the quote is. The quote is from the boy in the movie, the son. And this is what it is. Just because you can't see the air doesn't keep you from breathing. And just because you can't see God doesn't keep you from believing. Wow, that's the, that's the preacher's son. I think maybe we could have another sequel coming. <laughs> Jeremiah, whoo, that is a prophet Jeremiah speaking through <laughs> little teeny Jeremiah, the little boy in the movie. So I hope you enjoy the movie and I will pop in from time to time and uh, we actually, Kirsten's here with me and Andy, and uh, because the power went out down in Mexico, we are, I have to say it, we are broadcasting live from Camas, Utah. That's right, Camas, Utah is, the cat has nine lives, and that this, I see you, AC, you know Camas is not going easily. Tripod uh, put her paw down the first time we the, the humans tried to do something, uh, Tripod put her, her firm third paw down and said no. Uh, but we are activated. We are streaming the movie here from Camus. So Jesus is going to have some fun today. So enjoy the movie. And I will see you all very shortly. I'll be popping in.